thank you, Ray. I appreciate that. Thanks for the super chat. Okay. Ladies and gents, welcome to another video by the Asian Robot. I'm actually shooting this video live right now in front of my entire audience. And um, what I'm actually going to show you is how a beginner can get started in Dauntless. Now, just for the sake of doing it like a beginner, I've got nothing but the Recruit Sword, um, the Strike Down Helmet, because this is one of the lowest helmets that I have. All right. And it only has a 10 defense and an evasion perk. All right. Recruits jacket, recruits gloves, and of course, recruits trousers. That's all I've got. Now, of course, my Slayer's Path bonuses will make me quite a bit stronger than a basic Slayer, who a basic Slayer would uh, actually have 29. And if I'm not wrong, uh, 19 here. All right. But since. Um, Oh, sorry, it would have 39 and I think 19 here. So since I am a bit stronger than a basic Slayer, um, I will have to adjust things accordingly with my beginner's mode, but I'm going to show you what you should do. If you are starting Dauntless today, all right, I'm actually going to show you how to get started in Dauntless, what to do, and how to get everything up and running. So you've just logged in, okay? You won't have any cool outfits like me, but I just can't stand looking uncool, so I've got a cool outfit on, all right? This was back when outfits were free, you know? And uh, they weren't a cash grab like now, so don't bother spending on the outfits, FYI, just a pro tip. All right, you'll go to Emberthorn Cove, and it's always good to go into a public hunt. What does a public hunt mean? It means you call the airship. Don't go into a private hunt, because you won't see other slayers there. If you're totally new to the game, you want to go into a public area so that the public can assist you. That is the first and most important thing you want to do. So, coming forward now, we're going to go into this uh, Emberthorn Cove, which is the first place. Now, I'm not going to stay here, but I'm going to describe the methodology to you guys, okay? Majin Kai Ray, good to see you. I'm, I'm doing this while live on stream, so people are actually seeing this video being filmed live as we do it all right so um now that we're on this uh, island right you'll see other slayers here if there are other slayers on the island what you want to do is don't focus on breaking parts don't focus on any of the other other stuff that's not important all you want to do is go meet up with these slayers and start hitting the behemoth just hit the behemoth if you break a part that's lucky all right but you don't need to worry about breaking parts that's it just focus on one thing these ember, these poor little ember mains cannot even, um, cannot even actually, uh, damage you much. So, yeah, this is really a newbie-friendly island, all right? You will just, you will just constantly be able to, uh, knock down these behemoths. Of course, like I said, I've got Slayer Path bonuses that will help me out, but this is why I'm only gonna kill one behemoth, all right? This is just to demonstrate the technique for you. But to start as an actual beginner, what you want to do is you want to stay on this island until you are level 3. 3, okay? 3 is the most important. Once you are level 3, you'll be able to do this next step, okay? I'm doing this next step immediately because um, I have to compensate for the fact that I already have Slayer Path bonuses, alright? All the extra bonuses from my reforges and things like that, that that make me the equivalent of a level 3. So we're now going to go to Revelation Rock. Okay, we're gonna call in an airship, all right? And I'm gonna teach you exactly what to do, all right? This is the basic of the basics, all right? When it comes to doing well in this, okay? Now, once you get to Revelation Rock, okay? You're gonna need to do me a favor. You're gonna need to do me a favor here. Okay. You are going to need to hunt Nashers as many as you can. All right. The normal Nashers and the advanced Nashers, but also take your time to level up here. Okay. Keep attacking. Now, I have a lantern, but you're not supposed to unlock the lantern until a later uh, level in the Slayer's Path. <laughs> So I'm not even going to use the Recruit's Lantern, which is the most basic one, okay? Why? Because I'm not supposed to have it right now. That's something important. 
you can make use of your sword's mending blade core, all right? where every time you gain valor or spend it you restore 30 health that's how my slayer is restoring health which is why the sword is often the ideal weapon for a newbie all right you can heal by attacking which is very important now it is a public island so don't worry about other people attacking the behemoth or you know sort of taking your spawn that's okay let them do that what you want to do is you want to get into every fight you can but prioritize these gnashers if you can prioritize these Nashers, you will generally have a good time. All right. Now, of course, these guys completely broke everything on the Nasher. But all you want to do is you just want to keep on going. Okay. Get into every fight you can and just slay. Just slay and keep leveling up. Okay. You will want to reach level 5 on this island. Okay. Once you reach level 5, all right you will be able you will be able to do exactly what i'm going to show you all right i'm going to fight a little more on this island just to show you how fights will go okay but you want to stay on this island until an island event occurs by doing the by performing the island event you will be able to get ahead all right that is it is very important that you do so island events are the key so make sure you get those done now, if you participate in fights, some of these people are way over leveled for this island, maybe helping their friends or whatever. Um, that appears to be the case, but that's okay. That's okay. It's going to it's going to happen. All right. But as a newbie, don't even focus on the part breaks first. That comes later. That's something that'll happen slowly over time as you get better. And if you really have trouble, you can use a public uh, a private hunt. All right, to start farming parts. I will demonstrate that to you. Uh, a little later, all right. I will demonstrate the public, uh, the private hunt at a later time. Right now, what I'm going to focus on is I'm going to stay on this island, all right, with you guys, and until the first island event pops up, and I'll show you what an island event looks like. All right, you want to stay for these island events because they're very important to your journey as a beginner. So all you want to do, all right, is keep slaying these guys. I'm going to pause the recording now until the island event comes up, and then we'll resume. All right, resuming the recording right now, we have spawned an island event on this island. Do you see that blue thing? All right, you will head toward that. It'll tell you when an island event spawns in the chat. It'll say, hey, the search incoming, head to the marked area. It'll always be marked like this, and the behemoth will usually be fairly strong. What you want to do is you want to go straight to the behemoth and start whacking it. All right, break parts if you can, of course, as I've always taught you guys. All right, and just start attacking wildly. Hey, honey. Filming a video live right now, Kaz. Kaz is my girl. So she's watching this. Okay. So once you complete this island event, you will get several useful things. Aether Sparks, which will help you power up your gear. All right. Once you turn them into an Aether Heart. You also get Cell Cores. All right. I'll show you that at the end of this event. All right. So for a beginner, as I, as I mentioned, you want to get to about level 5 on this island, which will take a very short period of time. Once you get to level 5 on this island, you will be able to move to the next stage, and I'll explain that next stage to you um, after we do the next step. Alright, so first we got to complete our first island event, just to show you a little demonstration of what it looks like. Now, as you can see, I am more powerful than intended because of my Slayer Path bonuses. So, of course, uh, I will not be able to show you things from a full-on newbie perspective. But at the very least, watch my sword tutorial. At least learn the moves because it'll totally help you when you're doing something like this. And yeah, Kaz, I thought I should do a full-on newbie guide so that, uh, you know, slayers can start off the right way. Fighting teeny tiny beavers and all that. I'm using full recruit gear, but even then my power is too high, so it uh, makes things a little difficult. Now, keep in mind that every level you gain, all right, will increase your power and resistance by 20 points, okay? Watch the notification that comes up on screen when you gain a level. I'm surprised it didn't come up yet. But if you look at the box, it'll show you what you got from the event right and 
combat merits are good for unlocking stuff in your Slayer's Path. The common cell cores will help you out in terms of uh, getting your cells and whatever else you need. And the Aether Sparks are for reforging your gear, all right? We missed the uh, level up notification, but that's okay. Oh, there it is. 20 power and 20 resistance per level, all right? So that is what is very important. Uh, scan cause, I will never answer that question because if Dauntless wants my information or my assistance, they can pay for it. I will never give them ideas for free. My time is not free after all. And Rogue Assassin, good to see you. Assassin Bruno, welcome, welcome. I'm doing a beginner's guide right now, filming it live, all right? Um, while we head over to the next stage, I'm going to toss a quick ad grenade as well for those on stream. So enjoy, catch the ad grenade if you can. And now, um, now that we're heading back to uh, Ramsgate, okay, please remember that you need to be at least level 5 before this next step, but ideally if you can keep grinding on the island, get to about level 6 or 7, do as many island events as you want, grind however much you want on that island, just keep slaying on that island until you feel confident. Alright, even with just basic gear, I already have over 100 power and over 100 resistance. For you guys, assuming you don't have any bonuses in your Slayer's Path, this is the, this is the difference, right? you guys would have at most 80 power and 80 resistance added to that the 10 from your recruit sword you would have 90 power and 89 resistance okay so i'm a bit ahead of you guys thanks to my bonuses all right uh sorry at skill level four you have 100 power 100 resistance my bad um but again i am above you guys because of all my bonuses so in order to compensate for that we're gonna adjust we're gonna adjust all right you will now need to unlock by doing the island events to get combat merits and all the other stuff, right? You will literally need to unlock this second part, Hunter Crafter, and unlock Weapon Smithing, okay? This is very important. Also, you would have already unlocked your second island uh, from the Ember Mains, all right? Um, make sure you do, you do island events until you can unlock this. And then finally, what is most important is that you unlock Weapon Smithing. <laughs> Wills Borman is your... Is your first and most important uh companion why because you're gonna craft something here all right you're gonna craft a full set of armor and i'm gonna show you exactly which one to craft okay it comes from a little beast called the nasher the one of the, the beaver that you've seen literally the most basic creature ever now unfortunately my gear is all power surged already so i'm going to adjust myself to to the standards of the uh power surge gear but i'll i'll show you which island is right for beginners and then I've, i will in order to simulate simulate what beginners will encounter i will go to a much higher island all right so i'm going to equip the nasher sword all right and full nasher armor so we're going to do that right now okay i'm not going to put any cells in mine but technically speaking if you can please put cells in yours this is important okay so I'm just going to equip the full set of the Nasher stuff with no cells. <laughs> and it gives me about 247 power, 220 resistance. This is absolutely a lot higher than what you guys will have. You guys will only have, uh, if I'm not wrong, the sword would only be 20. So, and the armor sets would all be 10 each. So you would actually have uh, a resistance of 140 and a power level of 120. All right. So I am literally close to double yours. In order to compensate for that, I'll be going to a much higher level island. But now that you've equipped your full Nasher set, make sure you make sure you craft this, right? Your next goal would be to do public hunts on Ulrich's Peak, okay? This is very important. You guys will be doing public hunts on Ulrich's Peak. I will do it privately. I will be doing a private hunt, all right, on um, the Thunderwatch. Okay, this is to compensate for my extremely high bonuses. All right, do not actually go to Thunderwatch. You guys will be, remember, you guys will be level five, six, or seven, all right? And you'll be headed to Ulrich's Peak. This is your next area because you want to get a full set of Boreas, all right? As well as more Nasher stuff, okay? Um, but I will head, oh, sorry, I'm not going to head to Thunderwatch. I'm going to head to Frost March, all right? And this will give you guys the same simulated difficulty, okay? Your next goal, your next goal is while hunting behemoths and getting random parts, all right? You want to build a full set of Boreas, so eventually your goal is to get to Frost March. But 
now that you've fully finished your Nash armor, you need to get, you need to get to level 10, all right? So in order to get to level 10, now, like I said, I'll be simulating the difficulty of hunts, but, but, um, while simulating them, I will show you the hunting process. So give this a watch. Okay, every time I level up, I'll change to a higher island. I'll be doing it pr on a private hunt basis to increase the difficulty of fights to make to give you a good idea of how it will be, how difficult it will be for a newbie. Remember that you are not going to these islands that I'm going to, okay? I will, I will remind you of where, where you should go each time before I start hunting. This way you guys can follow along while also understanding how the difficulty is going to look like, okay? I know it's a bit weird, but I literally don't want to reset my account just to make this video, so I'm going to do it in this slightly weird way, but still guide you guys through, because as the best and only Donald's channel that still functions, I'm here to help, all right? Hello, Miss Eve. So for a total newbie, you will be starting at Sunderstone, all right? Because remember, if you're level 7, you want to go to where your level is right in between. Go to the island where your level is in between, right? So you want to be bumming around on Sunderstone. Make sure you use the call airship. Don't use the private hunt. I will be on Frost March to simulate the same difficulty. Okay. So <clears throat> as a newbie, go after the lowest level behemoth that you see first. Okay. And in this case, it'll be this spore struck Charog for me. For you, it'll be whatever else is on your island. The full Nasher set is very useful because combined with the mending blade core of your, of your sword, which you get literally as soon as you start your sword okay you will be able to you will be able to heal yourself while fighting which means that you don't ever have to worry too much about damage you can just go ham okay get your special up and running and then start slashing away remember to try and target behemoth parts this is the time where you want to practice targeting behemoth parts all right and you'll be doing this on your journey to level 10 all right, and as I mentioned, in order to continue to simulate the difficulty of higher level fights, uh, in order to compensate for my huge bonuses, um, I will I will move islands every time I level up. Basically, you want to keep fighting uh, behemoths and targeting their parts. Once you target their parts, you will be able to break them and therefore make some gains. All right. Usually, the tails and heads are two important parts that can be broken, and the limbs, such as their. Uh, left leg, right leg, whatever, you know? So your focus is to literally just keep breaking behemoth parts while fighting them. That's all I want you guys to focus on. As a newbie in Dauntless, this is all you will be doing, all right? It's okay if you take hits. It's okay if you can't really dodge. With the Nasher set, you will have a bonus that you will see. Um, I'm taking hits on purpose because the Nasher set has a rather unique bonus. Every time you take damage, it'll it'll uh, allow the bonus to occur at a quicker rate. But you will effectively be able to um, go enter a rage mode where you'll be immune to being staggered by the behemoth's attacks. And in that rage mode, uh, all right, you will basically um, be able to. Ah, you see, when you're glowing red in this rage mode, you will not only have increased damage, but you're also immune to stagger. So you can use this to to attack freely and abuse the strength of the Nasher, of the Nasher stuff. The Nasher armor is also neutral, which means that although it doesn't have any bonuses against behemoths of any one particular type, it will protect you well enough. All right, and it comes with toughness, which increases your hit points and all the kinds of healing that you get, right? So this will help you not only survive, but also dish out a bit more damage. All right, remember Nasher set. That's the first thing you want. Okay, I'm gonna show it to you right now. Full Nasher set. Raging Blade, okay. Nasher cap. Now, of course, mine has a higher armor value than yours because mine is already Power Surge, which you will learn about much later in the game. Nasher cloak, Nasher grips, and Nasher treads, okay? So keep using this and level up. It'll take a few kills for you to level up, but once you've leveled up, you will head to the next island, okay? So, I'll continue doing this and showing it to you. Welcome, Gabriel. Thank you for subscribing. So, I'll continue my fights um, while showing you how this works in general. Now, 
Now, where you can, please do dodge attacks. Dodging attacks is very helpful. All right. Earlier, I was taking hits just to trigger the ability and show you guys, but um, you shouldn't necessarily do that unless you've got like maximum hit points or whatever. And you're just maybe bored. Valiant Overdrive also comes with the ability to use the special as a dash. Uh, Taiji, there's no such thing as slash damage. Sorry, I'm filming this video, beginning of video, while also live on stream. So you hear me answering questions from stream once in a while. Taiji, there's no such thing as slash damage in Dauntless. So, if you're a returning veteran, you should know that. Slash damage is something that comes from, if I'm not wrong, Monster Hunter. So, I'm not sure uh, if you're even at the right game. But there's no such thing as hammer doing slash, so I don't even know what you're asking, Taiji, because that question literally does not exist within Dauntless. If you are truly a returning veteran, I suggest you forget everything you know about the game. In fact, watching this beginner video once I produce it, it'll be half an hour, but uh, it will probably help you get started in the right way. So yeah, double check which game you're looking at because there's no such thing as Slash in Dauntless. Oh, maybe there was Kaz, but yeah, there is none now. So every all damage in Dauntless is just damage. Slash is a Monster Hunter term. Okay, so as I mentioned, keep winning your fights. There we go. Now, your fights will be about as difficult as the fight I'm showcasing here. Again, I am underleveled on purpose because I've got a lot of bonuses for my Slayer's Path. You guys, as I mentioned, for you beginners who are watching this video, you will be at Sunderstone doing this. All right? And as soon as I level, I'll go up to the next area and continue to showcase uh, how this works. So I'll see you on the next island once I level up. Okay, I've just leveled up, so I'm beginning the recording again. Um, I'm gonna teach you guys about the next the next um, set that you guys are gonna need. You guys might also want to look into the Onus of Boreas. Again, the special in the mod won't change. Equipping a full Boreas set can be it'll it'll be a little bit difficult to craft, but it will generally be the next set that a lot of people start using. Now I'm gonna use mine without cells as always, um, but the Onus of Boreas comes with some very useful perks. Okay, and it will genuinely help you out with your stamina quite a lot. Um, you will now be weaker against fire-based creatures, but stronger against ice-based creatures. All right, this is this is very this is very very um, important because when you start to level up, right, your next goal is to hit level ten. Now, of course, I'm level five, but again, I'm compensating for all the bonuses I already have. Your absolute your goal next is to start searching for your easy Asian robot build. Whatever weapon you prefer. Now, by this time, you may say, I don't want to play the sword anymore. I want to choose a different weapon. That's okay. Just as long as you construct the right kind of weapon. So, like, let's say you want to change weapons to um, the pike or something. Just make sure you do the same thing and construct a revolution of Boreas Pike. Whatever weapon you end up constructing or playing, all right, up to you, all right? But just go get the Boreas stuff done, okay? Oh, yeah. I'll equip my lovely sword skin back. All right. Once all that is done and you've got your full Boreas set, your your goal should be to get to level 10 or maybe you're already level 10 and a bit beyond that. Start to construct your Easy Asian Robot build. You will find all the easy builds for every single weapon on my YouTube channel. That's all you got to do, okay? Just go in there and search, all right? Search for whatever weapon you need. If you get confused, leave a comment on this video and I will happily explain to you whatever it is you need to get to, to the easy build. However, however, okay, uh, while you're doing all that, your goal is to get to level 20 so that you can finally learn about reforging. This is at the end of the Slayer's Path. So keep following your Slayer's Path and learn about reforging, all right? Because when you reforge, you will get to increase the power of your armor and weapons and it makes the next journey easier but keep leveling up keep doing your island events all right that is the most important thing and keep on slaying but now just to showcase a bit about how the uh, boreas set works all right we're gonna go to this thunder watch all right again i'm going to a much higher level area to compensate for the various bonus i have 
All right. This is the full Boreas set. Bonus of Boreas. Boreal Epiphany. Um, Boreal Resolve. Boreal March. And Boreal Might. You guys will have completed some of the island events already, so you will probably have some cells. All right. The most important cells in the game are Tenacious. Okay. This is what you want to insert into all the punchy slots. In terms of the defensive slots, please use a Parasitic cell. Parasitic is very important to help you. And Toughness would also be a big help to you guys. Toughness and Parasitic. All right. And in terms of the Lantern slots and the, and the Technique slots, you can insert anything you want. Okay. We're now teleporting through to the island. I just didn't want to waste the 20 seconds waiting time. All right. Hey, Corey. I'm literally just uh, filming a beginner video right now while I'm also live on stream. So I hope you guys enjoy it. This is this is designed to just help newbies, uh, you know, get started in their Dauntless journey and everything and make sure that they know what they're doing. Once you've got your Onus of Boreas stuff, right, you will start, you will just uh, be able to take on whatever it is you need. So same principles as before. Um, Remember how I said that you were on Sunderstone? You would want to advance through the islands as you level up, but once you're about level 10, you should be about here. Remember, your level should always be in between. Okay, I'm going to take off the overlay again. Right now, I'm level 5, so I'm, I'm at Thunderwatch. But for you guys, once you're at level 10, each time you level up, right, you want to go to the next island where your level is in between and slightly on the high side. So Ulrich's Peak, the in-between level is, is between 7 and 8, right? So you want to be about level 8. Then you take on Ulrich's Peak. You wait until the island event comes. Then after the island event, you move to the next island. So you want to be at least level... Um, the in-between is like 8 and 9. So you want to be at level 9 before you take on Frostmarch. And you keep up with that system as a newbie, all right? Until you eventually get to where we're at, Thunderwatch. Thunderwatch will be level 10, you see? So again, this is how I am trying to compensate for my bonuses while still showing you exactly how it is a newbie would be playing this. So like I mentioned, your next goal is level 10. At level 10, you'll be on Thunderwatch. All right. Even though you're level 10, you don't have any of the bonuses that I do. Don't forget, my bonuses are damn near double of yours. All right. So here, what you'll do is you go for the for the uh, lowest level behemoth. Once again, oops, almost fell off the map there. Trying to put my overlay back on. Whew. Very smart of me, right? Okay. And now we'll go fight, like, the Snasher. There we go. I love how Kaz is just calling everybody heretics. You are certainly Kazzy today. Alright, don't be afraid to dodge through attacks because that's what you need. You're no longer using the Nasher set, and the Boreas set is a bit different. So you will want to try and survive as best you can, okay? Use your mending. Now, I'm going to dodge a lot here, but if you need to, use your potions. This is the time to use your potions. All right, if you ever get a shock effect, attacking a behemoth will remove it. So you can use that to survive. As soon as your special is ready, use your special. Because that will help you tremendously. All right, this is why I favor the sword, because the sword has so much survival into it. I can just keep putting down... Uh, plenty of these resounding echoes. Alright. Okay. And just remember to learn the techniques for interrupting with a sword. I have a video showing all the potential ways to interrupt a behemoth with weapons alone. Alright, you should definitely check out that video. It's called How to Interrupt Behemoths with Every Weapon in the Game. Well, just search how to interrupt on my channel and you'll find it because there's only one video on that. All right. It's very easy. The Boreas, Onus of Boreas special triggers together with uh, every time you use your sword special. So it really, really helps. Sure, no problem, honey bear. I'll deal with your nonsense. If you find that the behemoths are a bit too tough on an island, you can wait for an easier one to spawn. But if you don't want to do that, you can just take a slow and easy. Like me, I'm not going to wait because obviously, uh, like I mentioned, I am a lot stronger than you guys. So I should be able to, uh, to handle things. Hmm. 
What are you DMing Eve now, Kaz? Okay. Anyway. Take your time to learn behemoth attack patterns as a newbie as well, because that is probably one of the, one of the only things that will save you. Oh yeah, we know you're a weirdo, Miss Eve. We know you're the weirdest of them all. How dare you even be here? Okay. Hmm, I see. Look at you, daring to DM other people. This wife of mine, daring to DM somebody else. Okay, looks like I must uh, murk my Kaz now. Come on, come on. Is that so? Okay. Congrats on being extra nerdy, Miss Eve. Hello, MJ. Stay down, Shrikey. Stay down. I've got to make a good show for all the newbies in the game. Right. So although I'm just doing a combat demonstration for you guys, you guys will be doing this, pretty much this exact same thing until you reach an appropriate level. Remember that while you're in combat, try to break as many parts as you can. Again, you will probably have just about the same time I'm having here, but you'll be at a much higher level. So it'll be, you know, the fight will look kind of like this, all right? So just remember to do exactly what I'm showing you and to keep leveling up, all right? Remember, what you want to do is keep leveling up, wait until the island event pops, then head to the next island if you have leveled up. If not, stay on the other uh, the island for another cycle and work towards your new easy build. Once you get an easy Asian robot build going, you can literally do anything you want in the game, all right? And this is literally a half hour summary of exactly what a beginner should do in Dauntless, how to get started, how to make sure that you do exactly what, well, how to make sure that, you know, you can do whatever it is you need to do. All right. So thank you very much for watching this. I hope you guys enjoyed the little video. All right. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. All right. And um, thank you for spending this half hour watching this video. I hope it explained most of the important things for you to do. After you hit level 10, your next goal is to start building your easy Asian robot build and hit level 20. All right. So you'll just be following the exact same principles that I'm showing you, the combat demonstrations that I've shown you. Just follow that and you guys will have no trouble. All right, if you, got any quick, if you have any questions, just leave a comment on this video. All right, you can also like, share, and subscribe. All right, you want to support the channel more? Tips, donations, super thanks, super chats, channel memberships, all of this helps feed my family and keep this channel running. So we highly encourage that. Thank you guys very much, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Those of you on stream, don't worry, the stream isn't ending, but for those on video, I'll catch you next time.